Welcome back to another Case of the Mondays podcast. This is episode number two. I am King Boomer, joined by the one and only Matt. Say hello, Matt. Hello, Matt. Hello, how you doing, Gordon? Hello, fellow Gordons. I'm fantastic. Hello, Gordon. Good to see you. We're fully immersed at least in the talk Case to of you. the Mondays. We're fully immersed in the Case of the Mondays because we're actually recording this on Monday because we were supposed to record yesterday, but that fell through. <laughs> yeah. And a lot of it stopped because of uh, what we're about to talk about. But uh, have you been, dude? I've been good. Uh, went on a bachelor party this weekend. That was awesome. Yeah, dude, it was. Where insane. were you again? Insane. I was in what? Where were you again? Uh, I was on the west coast of Florida. I was in. Yeah, we don't live there, so I was in Tampa. I was in Tampa. It was fun. Tampa, it was a. That's it was sweet. a blast. I did some. Uh, did some gambling. Went to a little go kart. Like Grand Prix, where you're racing those go karts, mm-hmm. they go up to like 60 miles an hour, dude. It was sick. I was like, I was like Mario, just riding around a Mario Kart, dude. I was on Rainbow Road. Let me tell you, <laughs> it was great. Always love that game, especially the N64 one. Yeah, <coughs> so they I mean, got a casino there. Oh yeah, they have the Seminole Hard Rock. Seminole Hard Rock in in Tampa. Yeah, in Tampa. That's cool. Yeah, I did a lot of games. All right. Well, one of the reasons why we didn't um, get into recording last night was because i don't know about you but me and callie aka queen boomer could not stop going down the rabbit hole of watching will smith slap that living hell out of chris rock yeah we need to talk about this i was to watch yes, that video we do. 40 times in a row just to watch the hit and like watch will smith's reaction and everything like that Dude. oh my god it was wild it was it was insane. wild Dead, I mean, I've never seen anything like this. Man just walked up to him and committed battery from in front of millions of people. Yeah, assault, basically. I mean, this it's one of the most insane things I've ever seen. But um, before we actually do our takes on it, I'm going to let you do a take first because I'm curious to hear what you got to say. But um, I, I feel like we should give the listeners a little background in case they've just seen, even if they've seen the video or in case they've just heard about what happened. So the background of it is this. So it's the Oscar. The Oscars happened last night. <clears throat> Excuse me. And Chris Rock was hosting, and he was doing a bit before um, he presented. I guess it was like the documentary, best documentary award or something. Yeah. And he he roasted a couple people. He uh, and he gets to um, Will Smith and his wife Jada Pinkett Smith. And I feel like I should mention before they before he starts the joke. Uh, apparently, Jada Pinkett Smith has alopecia, which is a uh, disease that involves hair loss. I don't think it's anything else; it just makes you lose your hair or something like that. So, Jada Pinkett Smith has a shaved head, and <clears throat> God, I can't stop coughing. So she is sitting there with Will Smith and they're laughing at Chris Rock's jokes jokes. And then Chris Rock looks at Jada Pinkett Smith and says, uh, Jada, I love you. GI Jane two. Can't wait to see it, which is a reference to her bald head that she now has. Yeah. Now I don't know if Chris Rock knew that she has this alopecia disease. I have no idea. I've heard conflicting reports that some say he did, and he got the joke um, approved or not approved, and he did it anyway. Um, a lot of reports out there that I've seen have have said that he did not. He was not aware at all that she has this disease. So we're just going to leave that at that. So anyway, he says the joke, and Will it, the camera pans back to Will Smith, and he's laughing, and Jada is just livid. Oh, oh, she looks so pissed off. Le- oh, she's oh. staring daggers. And then she looks at Will, like, even harder. Like, you better do something or I'm you are never touching me again. Kind of look. So, Chris Rock, and Chris Rock, uh, he says again, like, come on, that was, a, that was a nice joke. You know, it wasn't that bad. So then he goes, uh-oh. And then you see Will Smith walking towards him. And Chris Rock is, like, laughing because he obviously thinks that nothing's going to happen. He thinks that this is going to be a joke or something where he's going to act like he's going to do something to him. 
No, he did something to him. Will Smith slapped the living piss out of Chris Rock. <laughs> You heard the thud. I mean, you heard the thud from the microphone that Chris Rock had attached to his suit or whatever. It just went thunk. I mean, you could probably do it to this microphone right now. Yeah, just like that. Did you just smack your microphone? <laughs> yeah. Can you imagine if it just broke your mic and that was the end of the podcast? We just submit that to the channel. Oh no, no, no! It actually turned off for a second when I did that. That was kind of made me laugh. But um, so he smacked the hell out of Chris Rock. And then Chris Rock goes, oh, wow. And then Will Smith walks back to his seat. And then Chris Rock is, like, obviously, like, stunned by this. He he was like, Will Smith just, and he says, Will Smith just slapped the shit out of me. So then you hear, um, not very loud, but you hear Will say, keep my wife's name out of your effing mouth. And then Chris Rock's like, what? And... Will Smith says, yeah, and then you can, and then he said, it was a, wow, dude, it was a G.I. Jane joke. And then Will Smith says really loud, like, because by this point, you can hear a pin drop in the entire building. And Will Smith says, loud as hell, keep my wife's name out of your effing mouth at the, like, at the top of his lungs. And the whole place is stunned. Dead silent. Dead silent. And then. Chris Rock is obviously shook because he was like, I, he's like, I will, dude, okay? And then he pauses for a second. And he says, wow, that was the greatest night in the history of television. And then after that, he tries to, like, move on and, like, continue with presenting the Best Documentary Award. And it's not, and he's messing up because he's I mean, the man just got totally clapped co- confused. It's hard, hard, yeah. as, hard as hell. I'm totally like, confused on what's happening. But after, actually, after the second... I forgot to mention this. I'm sorry. After the second time he, uh, Will Smith said, keep my wife's name out of your effing mouth, Chris... Di- and did you notice this, Matt, when Chris Rock just stopped and went, oh, I could... Okay. Yeah. When he said that, he was literally thinking about just laying into Will Smith about... Because, you know, there's a lot of info out there about, you know... Will and Jada's relationship and how there's like, you know, it's really weird at times. And, you know, I'm not going to get into that right now, but he was like, he probably has a whole plethora of material. He could have thrown at both of them and just ruined their night altogether. Yeah. But he was like, you know what? I'm not going to do that. So that's what happened. And then the, you know, the aftermath from last night and this morning, you know, the only things that I found out recently were that you know there's conflicting reports some say they've made up um others say that they haven't spoken at all and then i do know that will smith did an apology on instagram he also issued an apology um at the award show did but he, that did was you know i mean like yeah he apologized to like the, the he didn't people. apologize to chris rock that's for damn sure yeah that's for sure he, he apologized to the nominees and like the academy but Maybe apologize to the dude you just committed battery on. I don't know. I, like, <laughs> the thing is, like, apparently they've had beef for like for years. Apparently, this was really. Like, I didn't. I didn't read anything about that. No, they've had beef. They've had beef since like 2016. Yeah, there was like, really? a big thing about it. Yeah, uh, it was a joke about. I think Chris Rock made a joke about Jada back in 2016. It was like. It was something about her boycott. I think she boycotted the Oscars or, or boycotted something because it was like all white nominees. And Chris Rock made a joke about like Jada boycotting that. And it was like something in the lines of like, it was like she boycotted, boycotting the Oscars. Her boycotting the Oscars is like me boycotting Rihanna's panties. I wasn't invited or some stupid shit like that. Sorry. <laughs> stop. Language. Um, <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying to be. I'm trying to be more censored. I'm trying to be more censored. We have an audience. Now, yeah. Matthew. I have an audience now, Matthew. Anyway. Um, <laughs> so apparently they've had beef for like six years and was it all because of this one incident? Yeah. Uh, I guess, I guess Will doesn't like people making jokes about Jada when, you know, the biggest joke in Jada's life is Will Smith and, Ooh. Oh no. Dude. Wow. Yeah. No, honestly, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I take it. You're big, not a Will Smith fan. Not anymore. I don't know. No. He's been on this weird, like downwards ever since he was in that youtube rewind 
I've, no, I haven't liked Will Smith since then. Mm, I never saw that. It's really bad. It's very bad. It's awful. It's yeah. don't, ever, don't ever watch it. It's bad. Um, yeah, well, I, I don't like watching celebrities outside of their actual work. Yeah. But it's, it's usually it's usually kind of creepy. And I, I'm not, you know, I don't worship celebrities like um, some people do. I, t- I tend to, you know, if they do, if, if they're in a film and do a good performance, I tend to watch that. And that's pretty much it. The only reason I like Will Smith, I mean, like that I liked him in recent time was because he had one of my favorite comedians as a host for his Instagram show that he was doing for a while. Mm. And um that was really about it. I mean, I liked obviously I, I loved Fresh I still love Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. It's it, in my opinion it's one of the greatest shows of all time. But I'm just I used not, to love that show, yeah. Oh, it's so good. But I'm not a big fan of uh I'm not a big fan of Will after this. I think uh I think this was in bad taste. And the reason why I say that is because Jada like their relationship has just been just been awful. Like Will Smith cheated a bunch of times apparently and Jada has been Jada's been dogging Will Smith for like years on TV and all that. Like she talks mm-hmm. a lot of smack for someone she's married <clears throat> and has kids with, you know? Like she yeah. tears him apart. And then like this whole entanglement nonsense. She slept with a dude who's the same age as his son. Like I, it's just it's is this that is this that august rapper dude yeah yeah august or i don't know i don't know who he is because if he's is. if yeah go ahead but it's just like it's it's been it's been not a good relationship between them for a while now and uh-huh. he's trying to make it better like he reconnected with his first son that he had without jada and like will's been doing good but like will's will's like will's broken inside man like Jada, Jada's been dogging him forever, and she's, like, basically forcing him back into, like, a relationship, and, like, I feel like she's holding, I feel like she's holding herself as, like, a prize, and, like, this tantalizing thing to Will, like, like, the whole, like, if you don't stand up for me, you're not getting it kind of look that she gave Will Smith before he walked up and smacked Chris Rock, even though he was laughing at the joke before, and I just think, like, I think the two of them have been on this downward slope for a while and this definitely made it worse. Like, this was just like... I, it was just a weird... It was a weird thing to do. Did like, you see the acceptance speech uh, when he won the Best Actor Award? Yeah, he By the way, we didn't Oscar. we didn't mention that. We didn't mention that. Like, 30 minutes after he slapped the living piss out of Chris Rock, he won the Best Actor Award for that King Richard movie that he was in. Yeah. And he was... And then he apologized to everyone but Chris Rock. Yeah. He apologized to the nominees. He apologized to the Academy. And And by the way, you were saying he looks like a broken man. I was getting that from the acceptance speech. I mean, that speech, I was getting like Kanye vibes from Will Smith. The man is, the man is broken emotionally. I mean, Jada, Jada's just ruined him, man. Jada, Jada has not been kind to him at all. I like, Mm -hmm. it's not a healthy relationship that they have. And Will's doing what he can. And, I think well, you know, we should probably preface this by saying, you know, we don't know everything about that. You know, I'm we're looking oh, yeah, at from no. looking at it from the outside, and I'm looking at it from way outside because I'm not, you know, following every bit of their personal lives because I don't really care. Yeah, but because think, like, because this happened, it's like it's so. This is the wildest, most fascinating, most crazy thing I've ever seen yeah. on television. I think it's just like it's just not a good look for Will. It's really not. And then he goes up on stage and talks about he was sent to love and, like, gods with him and all that. I'm like, you literally just committed battery in front of millions of people. And you're yeah. talking about <laughs> spreading love and being the river for your people. Get on, like, go, go touch grass, bro. Like, you're so out of touch. He's so out of I want to promote food. love 30 minutes after I just slapped the living piss out of motherfucker. Dude, like, he's just, like, he's dude, celebrities are so out of touch. Oh my god! Like I hope most of them are. I yeah. hope that you get really successful, and I really hope that you don't lose touch. <laughs> <laughs> I really hope you don't become one of these well, weirdos. Like, you know, I don't people. think. No, I mean, I mean, you're already a. Fan we have fun on this podcast, and you know, I don't think I would ever hit that big, and I don't, I don't want to. I, actually, you know, being that famous is terrifying to me. But anyway, like the yeah. the, the, the my look on it was. <clears throat> This whole thing happened, and I'm looking at it at a different angle because, you know, I f- 
feel like, you know, a lot of people are saying that the joke was, you know, uh, it was in bad taste because of the whole, you know, alopecia thing with Jada Pinkett Smith. I think Chris and I want to... Do you think he kn- no, knew? No, I don't because think he, did. I don't know. he even goes on interview saying that he didn't know. And he also talked about I didn't it. See he got this. interviewed. Yeah, he got interviewed after um he got interviewed this morning. And mm-hmm. he said that both A, he had no idea she had alopecia. B, mm-hmm. Will still hasn't apologized. Yeah. Well, he put up an apology to Chris on Instagram. Oh, it, it wasn't like it wasn't a video of him talking though. It was like a it was like a paragraph, like n- a multiple paragraph note kind of thing. I want to see. But he did. He and he called him out by name. He said, "I'm speaking to you, Chris. I'm very sorry for what I did." Kind of thing. Oh, he actually did that. Even though he just read it, wrote it down. He didn't actually say it like on a li- on a actual video with his face in it or anything. But he did. See, yeah, he did apologize to Chris. Huh. Now, it was it genuine. I don't know. Like I don't, I don't know what, if any of this is genuine. There's a part of me that still thinks this is fake. You think this is fake? You think <laughs> there's a part? There's a part of me that's so skeptical about that because you know, like the Oscars is one of those shows. I don't know anybody that is like, man, I really got to check out the Oscars tonight. Nobody watches the Oscars, and I don't even, you know, I don't remember anybody even, you know, ten, fifteen years ago going, man, I can't wait to see what happens in the Oscars tonight. It's like one of those shows where, like, I don't think many people watch it, but I know for sure that the ratings th- that they have now are abysmal. I mean, so the it, ratings are abysmal, but the views are are wild. Oh, they're shooting through the roof right now. Oh, yeah, no, for sure. <laughs> they're the dude. There, if this was Spe- if this, specifically on uh, thirty seconds of it, if this wasn't, <laughs> if this was not a planned thing by the Academy and all that. Dude, mm. and this was the biggest, this was the happiest accident that could have ever happened. Well, I think this uh, this little incident saved Chris Rock's career. Because, so? uh, I mean, not like he was having a bad career, but remember how big Chris Rock was like 10, 15 years ago? Oh my god, yeah. I remember. Yeah. But n- now it seems like he's like kind of hit a, not a low point, but like a lull. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean. But uh, I this like- is the other thing. I was going to get to because I don't know if he knew that she had alopecia. You know, it seems like he didn't. Apparently he didn't. You know, let's let's just let's throw that aside. All all that stuff aside. Will Smith, to me, did something that is very, very dangerous. And I'm looking at it from a comedian's point of view in this take right here, because comedians, you know, and I do a lot of reactions to comedians on my channel. Yeah. This uh, this was a very dangerous thing that happened, and it has the potential to open a door that nobody wants to go through. Because a comedian's job is to tell jokes, whether they're in bad taste or not. This is the first time I've ever heard of a comedian getting assaulted for telling a joke. Yeah, And Will like- Smith just opened that door. So, like, th- if, you know... If I go to a school and, you know, the janitor, you know, I go to a school, I'm not going to walk up to the janitor and smack the hell out of him while he's sweeping the floor. You know what I mean? He's doing his job. That's what he's there to do. Yeah. A comedian's job is there to tell jokes, sometimes at the expense of other people. Most of the time. And most of the time, it's ex- at the expense of other people. It might not be the people that are in the room, but, you know... There's a lot of comedians out there that, you know, roast the audience, you know. Well, if for, I think... for the UK listeners, that Frank Frankie Boyle video that I reacted to where it's just him annihilating the audience is, you know, he apparently he does that all the time, you know. No, none of those guys got up out of the out of their seat and ran up on stage and smacked the guy. I think I think And basically few... he smacked him because he didn't like the joke he said. You know, what what happens if he didn't even smack you know, him Chappelle like goes he, only, he, didn't even, he didn't even smack him because he didn't like the joke. He only smacked him because Jada looked at him like, "If you don't go up there now, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go have sex with one of your son's other friends." Like, <laughs> like I don't. I like. I think there's a lot of circumstances that led to like how the aftermath went. There might be a lot of stuff we don't know about. Too, like Chris, I mean. like Chris Rock didn't press charges. Uh, 
the 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 LAPD like reached out to him and he kept the show going because like he was in front of millions of people. Like what is he gonna do? Is he gonna is he gonna square up? No, not on TV. Is he gonna dog Will for doing that? No, not on TV. Is he gonna walk off stage? No, he's hosting the Oscars. It, he's not gonna leave. So it's like I think like he handled that with a lot of professionalism. I must give him. I that, think yes. he did, and a lot of people are dogging him because like he they're saying he told a bad joke or it was a joke in really bad taste and it doesn't matter. There was no such thing as professionalism. Once he said that joke, and I'm like, dude, it's a joke. It's his job to tell jokes. It's his job. It's, it's, it's a comedian. Yeah. Job what is his profession? He is a comedian. It's what the- is, what do comedians do? I'm sure if you looked it up in the dictionary dictionary, it says a person who tells jokes. Like the, the job at the end of the day, a job of a comedian is really just to push the envelope and see like, where jokes can really go and i mm-hmm. love i love stabs at people i love roasts i'm a huge fan of those like comedy central roasts i'm a big fan i think like and he was doing it to everybody it wasn't even just a jada thing and yeah i get it she has alopecia but we can't confirm or deny whether or not chris rock knew that she had alopecia and honestly jada looks pretty good with shaved head like I thought it was just her style. It actually looks really good on her. And it could have just been one of those things where she shaves her head. And no, she's good. I think she's like, she, she's got to be like 50 years old now. And she still looks good. Yeah. And she, I think she looks even better with a shaved head. Like yeah. some, some women can pull it off. And I think Jada's one of them. I think Jada, Jada I think has she like, pulled off too. I think Jada I has like a nice, yeah, Jada has like a nice facial structure for a shaved head. And mm-hmm. I don't know, maybe just like, maybe cause I just love alt chicks and I love like shaved heads and like tattoos and stuff. I mean, she doesn't have to. Oh, yeah. But, like, I love, like, alternative looks. Of Everybody's her. getting Matt's fantasy girl right now. Yeah, dude. I love, I love all <laughs> chicks. I, I love, like, you yeah, dude. You Nazi girls, boy. When those girls, like, shave the side of their head. Oh. <gasps> anyway, but. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm a, <laughs> yeah. Oh. Anyway, but, like, yeah. I think, I think she pulled it off well. And it, and it felt like it was more of a fashion statement. Like, and she was, her dress was really big. Like, it was still a conservative look, though. Like, she was a single color dress. It was a big dress, but it was a single color dress. She had a shaved head. She didn't have, like, crazy jewelry on. She she had a nice look. And honestly, it, it could have gone the way of, like, oh, she's just shaving her head because it's the style. I had no idea she had alopecia. I didn't even know, I didn't even know she was still, like, relevant. And yeah, I didn't know that about. I thought the, I thought everything just kind of died she has down. Either. I thought she, I thought her fifteen minutes of fame died down after the whole entanglement thing, and the fact that she got so like she's married. Like Will Smith did uh, like the family sitcom with a lot of jokes for years. Will Smith has been in things that have been innately funny. I feel like I'm a fan she, of Will Smith. Like I I've always thought that, um, and this is a little uh, I think we should point this out too will smith has been dying to get his hands on an oscar for a long time yeah the fact that and he totally tarnished that 30 30 minutes before he actually got one because now anybody he's talking about is not him winning the best oscar award it's him slapping the hell out of a comedian i think he should have got the oscar way back in the day for pursuit of happiness yeah well now it's pursuit of slappiness I love that. I love that so much, dude. The memes that are coming out of this are great. My dude, the classic just like the classic logo of everybody hates Chris is Will smacks him. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I, I'm such a big fan of that show. Do you like that show? Everybody hates Chris. Did you ever watch I, it? I mean, I don't watch much television, so I don't. I mean, it was an older show. It was an older show. It was in like the 2000s. Yeah, but I remember. I remember it being on. I I I thought it was okay. I was but, a big fan. You know, I was a big. Fan. I don't watch many uh, actual like cable television anything yeah not anymore i don't Unless, watch it much anymore either i i especially yeah. try to stay away from like i stay away from the news and i stay away from like oh my god i my dude my parents are huge entertainment tonight people or my mom is at least and she makes my dad watch it because they're married. oh my god and i cannot watch any of that stuff dude the, it's, it's it's like the, creepy it's like who should we worship next it's a next up we have leonardo dicaprio petting it's, a turtle it's a dystopia. It's a dystopia. That's what it is. And it's a utopia for them. It's a dystopia for the rest of us. But and yeah, I agree. I'm just Oh, and there was another point that people were making. This one is this one is completely left field because like generally speaking there's like three groups of people 
that have opinion. There's like three main opinions that I thought that were only three of the situation. It was obviously Will was in the wrong, Chris was in the wrong, or they were both in the wrong. That's like the main three. But now there's this big fourth opinion going around. All I know is that this this incident was wild, and I couldn't believe it happened. And once it once it did, it was just blowing up all my notifications, like on everything. Yeah. And but I can't believe like that. Uh, the thing that makes me worry is that whole slapping a comedian for telling a joke thing, because that opens a dangerous door, in my opinion. I mean, what if you know the next time Dave Chappelle's on stage and he tells a joke and somebody just comes up and clocks clocks him right in the face, you know? Yeah. And then maybe it's not Will Smith. Maybe it's just uh, Dave Smith from down the street who decided to go to a Dave Chappelle show. And he's like, oh, well, Will Smith did it. Why can't I? And then he walks up and smacks him. Yeah. Yeah, I can see that. It's absolutely insane what just happened. I can see, I can see that getting a little out of hand. Yeah. But, I'm, you know, I'm not, I'm not for anybody in this. I mean, I just look at it as, you know... It, you're not. Why should you slap somebody for doing their job? Yeah, I don't have. You know what I mean, I don't that's have a, that's the main thing that came out of it with me. Don't you know? I'm not slapping the guy at the tire place because I didn't like the way he put the lug nut on the on the damn thing. I will say, I'm not a fan of. I mean, I think if I had to pick, if I had to pick something about like whose side I'm on, I guess I'm probably gonna lean more towards Chris Rock. I think I'm more on Chris's side because he is a comedian and it is his job to tell jokes and it's his job to push the envelope. And I think you're right. Did you I ever see Ricky Gervais's them... stuff at the Golden Globes? Oh my God, I love that. It was. It How was did great. he, like, if this, because that's what I'm saying, it opened like a new door because Ricky Gervais was t laid into the uh, stars at those award shows 10 times harder than Chris Rock ever did. Because Ricky and Gervais, he like never got a slap that. in the face for it. Ricky Gervais is kind of known for that, though. You know? Yeah. But I don't know. The whole thing's just really creepy and weird and fascinating and and scary and hilarious all in once. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think it's just it's I, what I just I think I think they're too out of touch, and I think that you don't just like I get it. You're under a lot of stress because you're an actor. People are always in your business, and you got some mental health issues going on. But like, this isn't this isn't some this isn't some simulation where you can just walk up and do whatever you want. Like, this isn't The Sims, man. You can't just walk up to somebody and smack him in the face because you don't like what they said. And I think it. I think you're right. I think it opens up a door to something more dangerous for comedians. And as a guy, like I, I always wanted to be a comedian. I always wanted to like do like 15 minutes on improv down south or something like that i always want to do something like that and i never did but i think i think this whole situation goes down a dangerous road you know and i don't think it's healthy for comedians. i agree like i get being criticized i get backlash and obviously if you go too far you go too far but that's the whole point of a comedian is to go too far you, you make jokes and you see what works and if it doesn't work then you just don't tell that joke anymore that's just how that's how comedy should work but people be getting their feelings hurt yeah, it doesn't seem like it works that much that way anymore, yeah. unfortunately. And I guess Jada Smith's whip cracked pretty loud. She f she looked at Will Smith and was like, "You better do something." D oh my God, that death stare! That man is whipped by Jada. Wow, and he was laughing. He was laughing at the joke, and then she gave him that dagger stare, and that it was over. Yeah, it's one of those situations where the wife wears the pants, and the dude finds something funny, and she doesn't, so he automatically changes his opinion, and it's just... That's, what's, that's what Callie said. She was she said, shout out to Queen Boomer. She said that uh, Jada definitely wears the pants in that relationship. Oh, 100%. 100%. I think the whole situation <laughs> is weird, and it's, it's enabling more and more backlash on comedians, and I don't think it's healthy, but no. that's, uh, that's my opinion on the thing. I think... I think there's a lot. You want me more. to read some? Um, you want me to read some comments that I got on my reaction video to this whole thing? Yeah. Because some of them are yeah. really funny. So, uh, yeah, I'm gonna read some comments. I put up a reaction video on here. It's not really my reaction. I just put it up to like get uh, some of my subscribers' takes on it. Um, 
So let's read some of them. Some of them are really funny. Some of them actually have good questions. So I figured I'd do this and shout some of them out. This is, uh, let's go to the first one. This one's MJ. If only Will then called Chris a Muppet afterwards, it would have been perfect. <laughs> wow. My favorite word. That Muppet. That is your favorite word. That is. Let's go to, ah, that's a really long one. I can't read all of that, even though I want to. This one, uh, this is from Graham Owen. He says, Chris should have said, wow, I'm going to be feeling that until August. Oh, oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that one's funny. That one is funny. That's a good one. That the RM, the RM. Imagine if Will Smith was in the front row of a Frankie Boyle gig. Yikes. LOL. <laughs> I saw one. I saw one. Um. It was it was something like, "Thank God Chris Rock did make a joke about Alec Baldwin's wife, or something like that." <laughs> oh. Wow! No, I love I did I the internet does not sleep, and I'm telling you, I mean, like ten minutes after that happened, there were memes. Like yeah. I, I literally got memes. oh, they're still flooding through. I got I remember I sent you oh. like ten today, dude. My my whole feed, my half my dude, half my feed is Chris Rock, Will Smith stuff. And yeah. it's fantastic. The, the internet really does not sleep, and because they are ready with jokes twenty four seven. Like it was, it was. I just, I think I saw. I think it was twenty six minutes after it happened. I saw like four or five Chris Rock, Will Smith things, and I was like, "What is this all about?" I didn't even know. And then I looked it up, and that's where I went down the rabbit hole too. Yeah, yeah. It's it's ridiculous. This is uh this is this might be my favorite commenter. He comments on all my videos, and I always crack up. This is Bobby, Sh Bobby. Sh God, I I always butcher this. Bobby Shaft went to see. I think that's how you say it, Bobby. I know you're listening. If you if you want to correct me, go ahead. I'm just a muppet, so sorry about that. But anyway, Bobby says Chris Rock failed to ask himself what would the Messiah Ricky Gervais have said. Cannot wait to see our Ricky watch this. Yeah. I actually totally agree with that. I w I'm wondering what Ricky Gervais thinks about all this. Because he's the one that lays into them the most. You know what I mean? Yeah. All right. This is another one. Andy Onions. Ricky Gervais would have done it right and punched Will straight back. Will was out of order. So thank you, Andy Onions. I love that last name. I think... it. I don't Go know. Ahead. I'm just no. I I didn't really have like a main point, but I think it's funny that I think I think it's funny that the internet just does this. Like even if it's your 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 audience, the Twitter verse, everybody, everybody's got jokes, and I find it I find it very funny how creative the internet really is. Like everybody's got there's so many people out there to make jokes for this kind of stuff, and the fact like. They pull up the Everybody Hates Chris logo. They, they're they making ad-libs off of the actual rap for Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Like, they're really, like, they're really coming out of nowhere, you know? Like, mm -hmm. I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan of when people react to all this. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. I got to send you one. There's, there. I just saw a crazy one. That one's. <laughs> that one's <laughs> Look bad. at it more now. That one's bad. But, oh, did you see. Oh, did you see all the, the pictures of the reactions of all the other people that were there? Yes. Yeah, oh. that was that was some wild stuff, too. Dude, Ryan Gosling was laughing. <laughs> Ryan Gosling was, like, holding his face. Yeah, he was. Trying not to laugh so No, the, the, the best reaction uh, photo that I saw, I think it was Nicole Kidman, but I don't know because she's oh, had so much plas dropped. plastic surgery that I can't recognize her face anymore. But, uh, I yeah, her it looked like her jaw was on the floor. Oh, they're, she they're literally. Great. She literally gasped. Even The Rock. Even but The yeah. Rock was like, holy hell. Like, look on his face. Yeah, because no one's slapping that guy. Yeah, no. <laughs> no right. This him. is, uh, this is Terry him. M. Yeah. This is uh, Terry M. The joke directed at a person suffering from alopecia was in questionable... Qu God, I can't talk today. Wow. It was in questionable taste. But Will Smith's reaction both in the slapping and use of the F word live on air was inexcusable. Then it was compounded by his following apology to everyone except Chris Rock. Yeah, that's, that's a good, good point. point. That's a good point. That, that is a very good point. That's a very good point. Good job, um, YouTube commenter. This one is, I, I'm butchering the name, but it looks like level... 
I'm just going to say level one UK. And he says, oh, oh, I saw it all right. I find it interesting everyone is criticizing Smith, but hardly anyone is criticizing Rock for mocking someone's medical condition. A joke is something everyone can laugh at. If Chris Rock has any sense, he'll stand up and say, I deserve that. And that'll be the end of it. So I, I don't agree with that. I, do, I think you should be able to joke about anything. But then again, like I said before, we don't know if Rock knew that she had that medical condition. There's no confirmation on that. Yeah. There's, you, know, you can't confirm or deny whether or not he knows something. Right. Yeah. There's no confirmation on that. Some people are saying he did. Most people are saying he didn't. So, you know, who knows Who knows what the hell to believe? Oh, dude. Um, I just saw one of your comments. I'm looking at your comments now. This one's good. The Fresh Prince of Bell End. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That one's great. That one's great. But. Yeah. Yeah, dude. I just, I don't know. I think, I think this whole situation is wild. That's like, that's such a weird setting to do all that at, you know? Yeah. This is a good cut. This is uh this is Sir Bowdster. When I saw it the first when I saw it the first time, I thought the slap looked comical and I thought it was pre-planned. That was until I heard Will swearing afterwards. That's exactly how I felt when it happened. Yeah, I thought it was oh, oh god, sorry. Sorry. I thought it was part of the bit. Like I thought Will Smith was going to like walk up and they were going to like he was going to like make a joke, ha ha ha, and then walk back and then he just smacks him. Like it it kind of mm. uh it kind of it was a shock to everybody because no one was expecting it. Yeah, this is uh, Jeffrey Charles, Will Smith. Disgusting. It's a puke emoji. He should have been the bigger man and walked out. What message does he say to the youngsters? It's okay to hit people if you don't like what they say. That's a very good point. I don't think he was ever going to do that. No, I don't think he would ever walk out. He's too you ready for a He's you ready for a real hot comment? I'm ready. Hit me with it. This is Mark Davis. He says if Jada doesn't like jokes about alopecia, then that's hair loss, isn't it? <laughs> wow. That's Nuclear great. take on that one. That's great. That is fantastic. That is that is fantastic. Wow. My God. <laughs> Dude, your audience has. Some I love uh, you know. The, whether it's a joke or a question, I I love, I love the people that comment on my videos. They're so, they're so creative. Yeah, um, you have you have some you have some good jokes on here. Yeah. Wow. The, uh, Jeff Duke. He says, "I guess Will's marriage is open to everything except jokes." Yeah, I saw that. I saw that one online before. That was a good one. That was a good one. Yeah, somebody else. Below said that's the fourth time I've read that comment. I love that. So, comment. Yeah, okay. I've been. Yeah, I saw that one before on one of the actual uh, slapping incident videos. Yeah. Mark Flower says Jussie Smollett said Will Smith slapped him too. <laughs> that was good. That one is great. That's fantastic. Oh. Mr. Wolf says, just goes to show you can physically assault someone in front of millions of people and get away with it, providing you're a famous actor. If anybody else had gone up and slapped Chris Rock, they would be under arrest, but Will Smith went to the after show party. Did you see, um, did you see what he was doing between the, like, when they went to commercial? Did you see, like, Will Smith, what was happening with him? I saw, um, I saw something where Denzel Washington was, like, trying to calm both of them down yeah in particular will smith but like he talked to chris rock too chris rock seemed like he was i mean we don't know because it was like a far away video you can't really see their faces that yeah. well but i'm but chris rock's body language was like you know i'm i'm fine but will smith was obviously losing his mind at that point and denzel came over to calm calm him down yeah i think it's like I, there was um, yeah, I saw this one video. There was like a guy or someone was taking a video from like the upstairs balcony or whatever, and mm -hmm. you see Will Smith talking to some dude, and then they hug it out, and like Will sits down on a chair and he just slumps over and he just starts crying. I'm like, wow, that's that's a reaction to have. I guess, yeah, I don't think he's okay right now. 
No, I don't think I don't think he's emotionally okay. I think he's going through some garbage right now mentally. Yeah, and it sucks. It sucks, but you know, I'm gonna read this one because uh, I actually commented back that I would <clears throat> answer it on this podcast. So this is uh, Tony Ashwell. I'm curious, Boomer, if you if your missus had an autoimmune disease and someone in front of millions made not for the first time a joke about it just to get some laughs, would you tolerate it? Clearly, she was upset, and the red mist descended on Will, which caused an irrational reaction. I'm not condoning violence, and it could have been handled better, but it's not like he really hit him. A slap around the face that Chris was able to laugh off isn't exactly punching or knocking someone out. Again, not condoning violence, but like Hollywood, it's being dramatized and blown way out of proportion. Move on. So thank you, Tony Ashwell, for that. And first of all, that was if that w- was just a slap, it was the hardest slap I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, that was that was a hit. I mean, that was a full blown slap, and I don't know, Tony, if you've ever been slapped like that, but I have. Um, like, what's his, what? Like Charlie Murphy said in the Chappelle Show, when the, when you get slapped, somebody has to go after that. You got to have a gunfight, and somebody's got to go. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> that is that's like a declar that slap is like a declaration of war. Yeah, but um. But in regards to if, you know, let's say Queen Boomer had an autoimmune disease and someone in front of millions, not for the first time made a joke just to get some laughs, would I tolerate it? Now, first of all, I'm not Will Smith and Jada Pinkett. Me and Callie have a really good sense of humor, so I don't think it would um, get to that point. If, If she had alopecia and we went to a show and... Because, you know, they're all stars. They all know each other. If we knew somebody that made a joke about her hair hair loss in front of us, first of all, if we knew that they didn't know about it, then it wouldn't be anything. Right. Because if, if anything, if Callie got upset, then I would have went to whoever the one was making the joke afterwards and went up to him and be like, hey, man, I don't know if you know this, but my, my wife has alopecia. Yeah. And um, she's really sensitive about it, and she didn't really appreciate that joke. And then the the person who made the joke would be like, oh, man, I didn't even know. Like, I'm so sorry. Like, you know. Well, also. The, and then they would have said, you know, well, let let Queen Boomer know that, you know, it was, I wasn't referring to that. I just noticed that she had a new haircut, and she looked like the girl from G.I. Jane. It would have gone down like that. Well, also, the second Callie's, thing, Callie's a champion. Like, I feel like she'd take it. Callie's a badass. I feel like she'd take that joke in stride. She, yeah, but then again, like she's not, she's not that kind of person who's like, you know, you can't make fun of me, you know, regardless of. I was gonna say I roast what's her. What's going on? I roast her like every time I see her. Yeah, I roast her all the time, and I live with her. Sure, that, that, exactly. <laughs> so, but um, what was the other thing I was gonna say about that question? Because that was actually a good question. It made me think. Um, but let's say he, if the comedian made that joke about Queen Boomer, and then I knew that he knew she had alopecia, I wouldn't go up and slap him or assault him on stage in front of everyone. I would probably pull him aside after the show. And And first of all, like I might laugh at it. I might not. But if Callie gave me the death stare, I would be, I would have just turned the smile off. And then afterwards I would have done the same thing going up to him and be like, Hey man, that was out of line. You know, my wife's very sensitive about that. Yeah. Come on, man. Like, what are you doing? Would have just talked to him like man to man. And then if he gave me a, if he was abrasive about it and said, you know, I, you know, Screw you, man. This is this is my job to make fun of people. If you can't handle it, get out of my face. Yeah, exactly. Then maybe then maybe I would have grabbed him or something, probably not slapped him or hit him right away. Yeah. That's about as you know that's my take on it. But uh Tony, thank you for the question. Um I'm not gonna go up there and smack a comedian for doing his job. That's his job. You know, it's it's it, he's literally a, a comedian is someone who tells jokes. Let, for a living. Let the man joke, you know? Let the man joke. Even if it's at your expense. Yeah. He's not doing it because I mean, he doesn't you know, like you. 
It's if just, all these comedians are getting slapped for telling jokes, we're really like trampling on uh, freedom of speech, it seems like now. It's literally a joke. He doesn't mean it. He's not trying to do it. Yeah. You know? And even if comedians do jokes in bad taste, the audience that is listening or watching can let them know right away if it's in bad taste. Yeah. You know, they'll boo or hiss or be like, oh, you can't say that, you know. Exactly. Or it'll be or it'll be an outrage in the news, like Chris Mox, Chris Rock said this and the whole world wants to cancel him now or something like that, you know? Yeah, I just he shouldn't get he shouldn't get assaulted on stage for that. I think this whole situation He will is, be uh, he will be ostracized accordingly, that's what I'm trying to say. I think this whole situation is ruined. I think I don't know. It's just it's it's a little ridiculous, in my opinion. I think it was everything was a little yeah. extra and both of them need to everybody in that group needs to just freaking go outside and touch grass, you know? Get back in touch with get back in touch with life. Here's a good one, Matt. Uh Bristol Sonic says, Will Smith, keep my wife's name out of your F and mouth. Then Chris Rock says, Okay, I'll keep your wife's name out of my mouth if you keep the other guys out of her mouth. Oh no. Oh. Oh no. <laughs> yeah. That one's bad. Yeah. That that's one's <laughs> that one's so bad. Yeah, there's one on here that I, I'm trying to scroll through to find because I know it was... Oh my god, I just found it. Alright, you ready for the best comment that I saw on here? Hit me with it. Okay. This is Simon Wilson. He says, I would have laughed if Will pulled out a cigar and said, Welcome to Earth. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that one. That one was good. That one. that one made me like almost drop my phone because I love that movie. I love Independence Day. That's a great movie. And that even though that's such like the cheesiest like part of the movie when he hits the alien and then says "Welcome to Earth," I still love it. It's a great moment. It's a great moment in that. Yeah, movie. that's a great movie. Yeah, Will Smith does this. But yeah, a lot of the comments on here, it seems like um, you know over three quarters of them are for Chris and against Will Smith. But there are some people who are backing Will Smith up. But, you know, it is what it is. I'm not saying, you know, any one person's 100% right. It's it's a mixture. But I think, in my view, I would lean towards um, Chris was way more in the, in, the, in the right because he's a comedian and he was doing his job. That's how I feel about that. What do you think, Matt? I, I'm, I'm, in the, I'm in the boat that Chris was in the right and that Will was in the wrong. And I'm yeah. gonna, I stand by that one pretty firmly, and mm. I, I'll play. I'm I'm pretty good at playing devil's advocate, but mm -hmm. I it just in this situation, I just don't see Will being on top in this one. I don't know. Yeah, it's 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 one of those. Things. I mean, he did come out on top because he still won the Oscar. Yeah, I mean that's that's the other thing that it was so wild to me about it. He literally slaps the living hell out of somebody, and then thirty minutes wins a, thirty minutes later wins an award. On yeah. live television, I, I mean, know. I think the whole. I don't know if there was any way where they could like with thirty minutes to go, even though they've obviously like know who's going to win the awards. Like thirty minutes to go, they're like, "Hey, why don't we switch this around? Because he shouldn't be doing that." <laughs> 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 Here, let's give it to somebody else who who didn't slap our host. Yeah, I think this whole, I think this whole thing is is just blown out of proportion. Kristen pressed yeah. charges, and Will still got his award, and like. Everyone just needs to move on. It's over. It happened. I like the memes. Yep. I like the memes, but people are like still caring about it. And it is. I'm like, man, just let it let it live as a meme. You know? Yeah. Let it be I agree. Meme. But all right. So Matt, what do you want to talk about next, bud? Uh, I got a good one. Um, like I remember how I was talking about the bachelor party at the start, and I was talking about gambling. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's a good topic. Uh, what's your opinion? Do you like gambling? Yes and no. Because I know you used, um, to, you used to work at a casino, right? Yeah, I worked in a casino for about uh, four years, maybe five, something like that. Um, I dealt uh, blackjack and craps, and that was pretty much it. Um, eventually, I was promoted to a uh, table games uh, floor supervisor, which basically is the guy in the suit behind everybody who's making sure everybody's you know counting the money right and... No, nobody's like trying to cheat on us or anything. Okay. Um, 
but yeah, the gambling, I used to be like, I used to love gambling until I worked at a casino. Working at a, at a casino opens your eyes up to so many um, ways that a casino just sucks the life out of people. I mean, I've literally watched um, people lose their livelihoods in a casino because they can't not go to a casino and gamble. You know, there's, I would, when I was working there, I'd see people who would be there every day. And the first few times that I saw them there, they would be gambling with thousands of dollars. And then six months later, there's, it's the same people that I'm talking about now. They're there again, six months later, they've been going every day and now they're gambling with like five, ten dollars because they don't have any money anymore. It's uh, it's a scary, scary and eye-opening thing to see that. I probably gambled much more prior to working in a casino than I did afterwards. I'm a uh, big now. I now I only gamble like once a year, if that. I only go gamble ahead, really when I like go on vacation. I don't like I don't drive down. Me there. too. That's yeah. That's usually when I do it. Like I don't drive down there like on a whim and go gamble. I I, I go like at bachelor parties or like when I'm on a cruise. But I like I like gambling. I like gambling a lot. I'm a big fan. And I I mainly play It's roulette. fun. You just can't make it a habit in my opinion. Yeah, I mainly play roulette. I'm not a big blackjack guy. I never really have been. I like Texas Hold'em, but that's more of like a friend sitting around a dining room table smoking cigars and having drinks kind of thing. So, uh-huh. I'm like I'm a big roulette guy because it's all chance. Like I like the idea of it being chance. I like betting on chance stuff. I'm not I'm not one like in my opinion Gambling should be strictly chance, like chance games. I think that's I think that's healthy for because that's what gambling is. It's just it's it's whether or not you win, and it's just a percentage, in my opinion. But like I'm a big I'm a big blackjack guy, and I I generally have a rule when I go. If if I'm if I'm going on a cruise, I'll try to save up like five bucks or ten bucks out of every like shift at work until I've got like a few hundred. That way, I like I don't care about losing it, and that's all I bring to the casino is that money. So that way I'm not like dipping into the rest of my money trying to like make things happen, you know. I'm a I, I like I when I went when I went to Tampa for this for this bachelor party I just went to. Um I was playing roulette. I walked in with like $100 and put $100 in. It was it was a it was a roulette machine. Like it still spun the ball around, but there was no it wasn't like at a table, which was weird. But so I go to this thing and like you click on the screen on what you want to bet and I bet $100. I was playing I doubled my money, like, first two rolls because I hit eight black, but I bet, like, a dollar on it. And I got all the way up to, like, 230 from 100, and then I went back down to, like, 170, and I was, like, floating around for a little bit. And I went all the way down. After about 45 minutes, I lose all of my money. I'm out. I'm completely out. And I'm like, all right, screw it. I'm going to put in – if I'm going to lose $100, I'm going to lose 120 And I put in 20 bucks, and I'm going back and forth with my buddies that were on the trip. And I missed two rounds. I'm like, all right, whatever. I'm going to bet now. I put 10 on 8 black, and I put 10 on 31 black, and I hit 31 black. And I made $270 more than what I started with. And I think that was pretty tight. Yeah. So yeah, I, sometimes I was, things was, like that happen. Yeah, I was bad. I don't, I don't go crazy. I, I have a big I'm like I have a big rule about gambling cuz I've watched I've watched my buddies uh I watched my buddies lose like thousands of dollars. Like they bet, like they'll walk in with like three hundred dollars, and then they'll just keep playing, trying to win. I remember like when I went on a cruise like four years ago, my then friend at the time lost like twelve hundred dollars in three days. And I'm like, you're crazy. Like that's insane. Like how do I? I don't want to take yeah. that kind of money, but I'm a I, I I like gambling. I enjoy it. I'm I'm pretty reserved when I play. I'm not one of those people that makes crazy bets, even if I'm way ahead. I'm not one to make crazy bets. It's not my thing. It's not my style. So, yeah. But I think it's uh, I think gambling is a lot of fun. If you know how to control it, it's not like an addiction or anything like that. Gambling's a fun little thing to do every now and then. I'm a big fan. Yeah, every once in a long while, I agree. Yeah, it's um, yeah. But where you work in a casino, you see some wild stuff. I was gonna say. Um, you know, it's kind of like, you know, because me and you have worked in a restaurant before. And um, you know how, like, in a restaurant, and this this is why I hated working at a casino. You know how working in a restaurant where, like, the people you talk to, it's like nine out of every 
10 people or eight out of every 10 people is pleasant, but then they, you have the one or two that are, you know, buttheads. Yeah. Well, flip that for the casino where eight or nine out of every 10 are buttheads. That's how it is. Dang. Everybody's just, and they, sometimes they'll be nice at first, but then when they start losing money, they become enraged and they're, they're not nice people anymore. And just dealing with people who are constantly angry at you all the time. I mean, that's basically what the casino life is when you're an employee for a casino and it just wears you down. Huh. It's, it sucks. That's why I got out. Because when I first started the job, I thought it was—I thought it was an awesome job. I'm like, you know, I'm just dealing games and watching us count money the whole time. It's—it's it's, this is easy. And then you actually, you know, once you talk to people for to customers there, you know, for extended time, like you know, first it's a few months, then it's a couple years. It just wears down on you, and it—it it really brings. At least it did for me. It brought me like really down yeah and i i vowed to, that's one of the reasons why i moved uh down here to the state of florida because you know i'm originally from maryland but uh, w one of the reasons i moved down here was to get away from that i did i was like so upset with how stuff turned out at that job i was like i gotta i gotta get out of here and start something totally new and now there's a fair amount of casinos in florida yeah, but one thing I've noticed about casinos in Florida is that casinos in Florida they don't have craps. It seems like they might have the uh, the like automatic craps or like you know the one where it's electronic or, or something, but they don't actually have craps where they have crap dealers and a box man, you know, yeah. watching the game or anything, and where you can actually throw the dice. It's um, yeah, they do it on like cruises and stuff, but I don't think the Hard Rock yeah. the Hard Rock might have one craps table that I saw while I was there. But it was probably like tables. electronic or something like that. Well, though. all the other ones that I saw were electronic. I can't remember if they had like yeah. one real one or if it was all electric. But I don't think so because I don't think any of the, the casinos in Florida have craps, which is a, which is a shame because you know, like I said, I don't gamble a lot. It's probably like once a year if that. But the two games that I do enjoy playing are blackjack and craps, and it's not just because I dealt them. It's just because I think they're the most fun games. Yeah. And craps is one of those games where you know you can slowly build up like a lot of money but or it goes the other way where you lose a lot of it real fast like instantaneous instantaneously yeah but it is it is a really fun game to play especially if you know what you're doing because it's it's by far the most complicated game in the casino just to give you an idea when i did the training for uh working in a casino um i trained to deal blackjack for about one week and I train to deal craps for 12 weeks. Ow. That'll, that'll give you some kind of an idea of how complicated that game is. You're literally dealing the same game for 12, 12 weeks, and you still are not that good at it when you start out. <laughs> Dang. Because it's a lot of moving parts. There's a whole lot of uh, odds and things you have to know. You know, have to know how to count like really, really fast um, on the fly. And you got to do it with, you know, because you could potentially have eight people you're dealing to on one side of the table. And they're all trying to get their bets in and stuff before the dice are rolled. Right. So, it's, but that's what I like about it as a player because it's it's constant, it's quick, and it's like, you know, let me get this, let me get that, and the dice are going out. Quick, let me get this. All right, no more bets are in. All right, dice out. Here we go. It's that, that kind of deal. It's like, you know, the guy on the stick is almost like a... Uh, auction guy yeah you know anybody want a horn bet horn bet right in the middle i can get you get it get it four ways horn bet in the middle that kind of thing yeah i've never played crap so i don't really know much about it you I, you probably like it but you like you know like i said when you first walk up to the table you wouldn't know what the hell is going on yeah i do i do roulette do. and that's about it yeah roulette never really had much appeal to me um blackjack is my favorite by far to play it was my least favorite to deal. Craps was much more fun to deal. But um, Blackjack, is that's my game. It always has been. You know, our family, whenever we go on vacation, we usually try to take over an entire Blackjack table just so no strangers sit with us. <laughs> but it's, uh, yeah, it's, 
gambling was one of those things before like i said before it before that i worked in a casino i liked it a lot after i worked in a casino i still enjoyed doing it but i'm very wary of it because of uh what i went through in a casino so yeah that's uh that's the uh brief version of my uh casino working days gotcha uh, matt i got a question for you sure um because we've already gone over an hour so i kind of want to we'll wrap it up soon but i did want to pose this question to you that we could probably talk about for a little bit if you had a time machine but you did you you're not allowed to change anything you're basically just there as an observant like the people there don't know you're there but you're there watching things um from this time machine time machine point of view or you can't interact with the world that you're watching what time period would you go back to and why um it could be like a civilization that you want to visit or just a specific time period i got a couple i got a couple okay hit me one i like dinosaurs i would like to see the dinosaurs in real life that'd be kind of okay cool. and uh yeah. I'm a big, I'm a big Navy guy. Like I, or not, like I'm, I wasn't in the Navy, but I mean like big ships, like pirate ships and and Vikings and all that kind of stuff, like sailing the seas and Vikings, you know, Vikings pillaging and getting pirates plunder and all that stuff. Like I'm, I'm, I'm into that kind of stuff. I love Vikings. I love pirates. So I would love to go to either of those times and just. So you want to see Nassau in the early 1700s? Yeah, I want to do that kind of stuff. Or not you not even necessarily do it. I just want to witness it. Well, I'm going to witness Vikings. Mm. I'm going to witness pirates. I think it'd be it'd be very I mean You'd obviously witness a lot of death. I mean obviously pirates are super <laughs> romanticized in society like whatever. Like it's it's a lot. It's not anywhere near close to what it was like back then, but I like the idea of like yeah, swab the poop deck. Like I love pirates. Like I love stupid pirate stuff like that. Did um, you just say swab the poop deck? I did say swab the poop deck. You heard me, and I said yeah. What are you checking? What are you checking it for infections? I sending said, in a sending a sample into the doctor later. Yar. But I'm a big like I love. <laughs> I love, you remember Steve the pirate from dodgeball? Yes, I do. Yeah, I love that character. I fucking I I, I, I love was... that character. I love Steve the pirate because he does. He's just like yar, and he dresses like a pirate and. It's like 2004, and like <laughs> he's going through Vegas, and he's just like a pirate. And everyone's like, "Go, go back to Treasure Island," and they're like throwing yeah. the milkshake at him or whatever. Like, I dude, I, I I think it's so funny. Like, but like I actually like real pirates. I like real pirates. I like Vikings. I think that stuff is cool. I, I would be a, mm. I'd be a big fan of seeing that stuff. What about you? What about you? Well, the first, I mean, I'm my favorite period of history is what, what would be termed, I guess, ancient history and particularly uh, western ancient history so you know like the the ancient greeks or rome that kind of time period is that i just want to like western i thought i thought western was like us yeah well uh, you know western civilization started in ancient greece my friend huh. that's where we got all, all of our ideas from that's where they all started um later on it's moved further west and we've refined these ideas over the years but that's where it all began yeah i guess like the current western civilization versus western civilization back then are different like people refer to us yeah. as the west and but no i i think uh i love greek mythology i'm a big mythology guy i love history you know that i like history also and mm. i i think that'd be cool to visit back then i just want to walk down the streets of like rome or something and that, like, while it was at its height, and just visit like a market, and like see what the people are peddling on the streets or selling in the in their little cubicles that they set up, so they can make a couple bucks for the day. And then while you're doing this, you see a, a Roman patrol marching down the street, making sure nothing suspicious is going on. Just you know, just just that would make me happy. Just to see how people, just to see how people lived, you know what I mean? Yeah. No, I get that. I totally get that. I think, uh, I think that'd be a cool one to touch up on. I'm a big history junkie. I would love to see 
that kind of stuff back then. And I love mythology too. So I think I think it ties into my like story also, like the like the Vikings and like Norse mythology and like paganism. Mm -hmm. and stuff. Like, I think that stuff is so cool. And you probably really like the uh, if if we're talking about ancient Greeks, you probably really like the Athenians. Yeah, because they they were they went all over the seas big time. Yeah, big fan. Um, just imagine being like you know you're right outside the city of Athens, and then you know a bunch of uh, a bunch of Athenian um, poor people are on the side of the beach uh, brushing down their uh, trireme before they put it into the waters and sail off onto another island to uh, show their presence with authority to make sure that the island that they're going to pays their tribute or something like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you're just watching this from your time. You can't really interact with them, but you're just watching this just to see how they did it. That kind of thing. You probably really like that. I would definitely like that. I don't know. I'm a yeah. big, I'm a big, I'm a big history guy. I don't, there's so many, there's so many cool answers to that though. Like, Oh yeah. So many... I mean, any of them would be interesting really, but the, the, that's the, the ancient Greece or ancient Rome. Those are the two that jump out to me the most. Some of the, I mean, one, another one that jumps out to me is like, you know, on this side of the world, like right when the, uh, the British or, you know, the, the Dutch or the French or the Spanish, like first, started colonizing things just to see what, you know, the interaction between them and the natives or something like that. And seeing how that all went down. Okay. Just, I mean, it just, the you know, cause back then, you know, think of how, uh, how unnerving and brave it must've been just to go all the way across the Atlantic ocean to go to, you didn't know where you were going to end up, you that know, so hard. Oh, I know. And you're at sea for for months. I mean, that's it's got it had to have been terrifying. I'm surprised more people didn't run out of food and drinking water. Yeah, well, they probably stocked up a lot, and they probably rationed on the way over here. But no, yeah, but still. Yeah, and that's in your uh, kind of naval thing that you were talking about when they first started. Uh, floating ships over to this side of the world with nothing but a bunch of provisions and no idea where anything was. Yeah. I think it'd be cool to explore more of that stuff. Like, I like... Because Florida has a bunch of, like, shipwrecks all over the eastern yes, coast. Yes, all over. And on the southern coast, too, like, by the Keys and stuff. There's so many... Mm -hmm. There's so much, like... There's so much action that went on in like the 15, 16, 1700s. And yeah, this was pirate people, land. Yeah. A lot of people have supplies and people drop gold and jewels. And then the only uh, the only below. town that was around was actually Spanish, St. Augustine. Yep, St. Augustine. Did you just say St. Augustine? <laughs> I, knew you, I knew you would uh, stop there. Why do you say St. Augustine? Oh my God, Callie's giving me daggers right now. Oh, good. I am, too. I'm giving you virtual daggers <laughs> because you say St. Augustine like a goofy goober. It's I don't know. It's probably because of that one black sail scene it's that I'd say Saint it. Wait, it St. Augustine. Saint Augustine is that way. It's St. Augustine. St. Augustine. Get it you right. mean like Steve Cleaves? I hate Steve Cleaves. Don't it's your boy voice. Steve. I hate Steve. Don't do his voice. What's wrong with Steve? You can't be mean to Steve. He's your friend. The audience doesn't understand Steve. Stop being Steve. <laughs> I hate Steve Cleaves. For those who didn't know, Brian was going through this weird phase when we were playing. Oh, God. Are we going to date ourselves a little bit? We played Fortnite back in the day. <laughs> and Brian was going through all these voices that he was doing for a while. And Steve Cleaves was this. I did not like his voice from the start. I wanted to punch Steve Cleaves in the throat. I'm not a, I'm not a Steve Cleaves fan. He, uh, he annoys the piss out of me with it. And... <laughs> I don't know. I'm just not a fan. I he was he would and it just became like a meme between us. And me and me and Brian, every time he'd be like, Hello, that's Steve Cleaves, and I'm like, bye, and I would just hang up. <laughs> <laughs> I did not like Steve Cleaves. You liked uh you like Chattanooga Chad though. Chattanooga Chad was great. Well it's because I'm a I'm a Florida born and raised southern gentleman, you know? I like yeah. Chattanooga Chad. 
like Chattanooga. Yeah, Chad. we liked we like Chattanooga Chad. He may chat. Speaking of Chattanooga Chad, he may debut on the channel sooner than, sooner than later if you're catching my drift. Oh, okay. You know, okay. I might send I might send him into a, a couple establishments and uh, gauge him on the freedom meter. You know what that is? Freedom meter. Yeah, I walk into a place and I say, on a scale of one to ten, what's your freedom meter? And then they let me know how much freedom they have, and I tell them if it's not a 10, they need some more freedom. I could just imagine you going around and Callie filming you saying that <laughs> stupid stuff. Do you want to borrow one of my cowboy hats? It'll make it look more believable. No, no, because I'll tell you what. Chattanooga Chad, he has a hat already, and it's made out of an American flag. And that's all he needs, sir. Huh. <laughs> Chattanooga Chad's the man. Steve He's Cruz. also got a pair of American suspenders and an American bow tie. I so that's all he needs. Chattanooga Chad is a is a homie, and Steve he is Cleves a can, major proprietor of freedom, sir. And Steve Cleves can bend down and kiss his own ass. <laughs> <laughs> you really hated that voice. I hated that voice so much. You know what voice that um? You know what voice? I mean, it's not like my own creation, but it's you know what voice I do sometimes that Callie hates. It's it's the droopy dog one. Oh, from from uh, like Looney Tunes. Yeah, I don't know what the, what that Tunes? cartoon's from, but I I don't think he's a Looney Tune. He might be, but Do you know, voice. droopy dog. Yeah, boom, boom. I can't. I can't. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, my she's, you know, she's like, giving me the she's giving me the Jada Pinkett Smith look. I gotta stop. Oh, no, oh no. <laughs> well, you know my one that I do. I do the Patrick Star impression. That's very good. But the what? You've heard my Patrick Star impression, right? I don't think I have, dude. From SpongeBob. You've never no, heard, I've never heard. You've it. Never heard me do that. No. Before. All right. No. Well. All right. All right. Well, sorry, King Boomer. Your channel's about to get demonetized. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it can't be that bad. No, uh, it's pretty good. All right. Um, let me pick. What's a good one? Oh, I got one. All right. <clears throat> Magic Conch Shell. Can Squidward have some of this yummy, delicious, super terrific sandwich? <laughs> and then he goes, Can I have this yummy, delicious, super terrific sandwich? I feel like it's pretty good. But there's a couple other ones. I can't do I can't do any of the other ones. Hey Patrick, what's the I wanna know what the freedom meter is underneath the sea. I don't I I I have I wasn't ready for that question. Well, you need to you need to let me know because Chattanooga Chad is getting ready to go uh, down there with some thunder and give you some freedom. Uh, I feel like we're pretty free. I get to eat Krabby Patties at three a.m. But no, I think. Uh, yeah, but you don't have American Krabby Patty, sir. I don't know what an American Krabby Patty is. We don't have <laughs> Krabby Patties up here. You're making nonsense, Brian. It's a crab cake from the home state of Maryland. Even even I know that as Chattanooga Chad. Well, I don't live in Maryland. I'm from Florida. Well, I don't live there anymore, sir. In fact, I'm from Chattanooga, so. Fair enough. Fair <laughs> we enough. need to stop this. We need to Everyone's going to unsubscribe right now. I'm shocked they haven't already. <laughs> I know, right? I know. I'm getting tired. I'm delirious. Yeah, me too. Anything else you want to talk about before we wrap it up? No, nah, that's, uh, I'm, I'm, I think I'm good. Okay. All right. Well, that was our, the second ever episode of Case on Mondays. You know, we talked about, um. The Will Smith, Chris Rock thing for 50 minutes. Wow. We almost did an entire hour about that. I told you before we did it, we were, we, we were definitely going to spend a long time about that. Yeah, we should probably uh, we should probably trim this episode a little bit. Nah. We'll just keep it how it is. Fair enough. I might, you know, like last time, I might cut out like one or two clips from it and put them on as a separate thing. But Gotcha. Other than that, I mean, it was something that needed to be talked about. I mean, it was the wildest thing ever. It literally slapped the Ukraine war off the front page of the news. Yeah, which is a hard thing to do. Considering A it's very hard, hard thing to do, considering that's war. the craziest thing that's happened in the world since uh, 1945. Yeah. But I think... Uh, Congratulations, Will Smith. You did it. Yeah, I think that whole... You distracted us. Stuff. Yeah, thank God. Thank God, because I need it. But <laughs> yeah, I think that's I think that's it for me, B Rai. I'm a little sleepy. Me too. All right, we'll do it again next week. All right, brother. So thank you very much. We'll do it again and 
for everyone listening, thank you very much. And you guys have a great day. Hope everyone's staying safe out there. Um, please do not try to slap anybody in public. Unless they really deserve it. Unless they really deserved it. That's true. <laughs> if they right. really deserve it, I might come and help you out. There you go. But yes. All right. Everyone, I'll see you next time. Say goodbye, Matt. Goodbye, Matt.